party. The title of this message comes from verse 12, where it says, I love you, Mama. I love you, Pastor Campbell. I love you. I love you, Pastor Bobby. I love you, Bishop. I love you, my son. We never saw in this fashion. We never saw in this fashion. People of God, God is about to reveal himself to you like you have never seen him before. And many of you are going through some difficult times in your life. And it seems like the closer you get to God, the more trouble and opposition you face from the enemy. I'm going to say that again. It seems like the closer you get to God, the more trouble and opposition you face from the enemy. And I come to expose the devil in your life. Because the enemy knows you are closer to your destiny than you even realize. And the fact that your life is getting harder, the fact that the temptations are getting turned up seven times hotter is only confirmation, hear me, that God is about to bless you. People are going to look at you and they're going to say, we never seen it in this fashion. Because the truth of the matter is, it's not what it looks like. I know you made a mess of your life before you got saved. And you still made a mess and kept the mess in your life after you got saved. But the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that the devil, look at your neighbor and say the devil. The devil has gone too far in your life. And God is about to intercede in your life and rescue you from making a mess in your life. It is the enemy's job to deceive you and to keep your faith shallow and weak. Because one of your biggest enemies is not the act of sin, but the greatest hindrance in your life is not believing God's holy and omnipotent word of God. And it's the enemy's job to keep you from believing the word of God. Because now, if you ever start truly believing the word of God, then the devils and the secret demons in your life will be exposed and defeated. Because sometimes we can be dealing with some secret demons. We can have some secrets in our lives that has not been exposed. God, I feel preach early. And the greatest enemy, look at your neighbor and say the greatest enemy. The greatest enemy now is not trusting God and his holy word. That's the greatest enemy. Not trusting God and his holy word. And what the enemy does is he attacks you and throws life's obstacles your way to make you not believe and trust in God. The next thing is the enemy keeps the Christian. He keeps the Christian out of the word of God because the devil knows that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you study and read God's holy word, the more your faith is ignited. Some of y'all need a bomb of faith. You need faith that can move the depression. You need faith that can bring you out of the pit of hell. Because many of you now, under the sound of my voice, you have become now possessed by what you are dealing with. You have now become possessed by what you are dealing with. God, I feel a preach. Many of you have become possessed by the way your life has turned out. Many of you believe but you don't believe. You gotta keep it real and say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes, yes. Many of you now are being controlled 
over the way it looks in your life right now. But I come to tell you that God is about to bless you like you have never seen before. Yes. And your family, your haters, and your critics are going to say, we never saw it in this fashion over your life. Can y'all understand me? Yes, Bishop. Bishop. Can you understand me? Bishop, take your time. Take your time. People now, people are about to see the glory of God there it is. in your life. There it is. People of God, God is about to see the glory of God in your life. This now brings us to the text. The pericope says in verse 3, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. That's it. Talk verse 4, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy Come lay. On, the revelation. Look at your name and say the revelation. The revelation. I feel a teaching anointing. I feel a teaching anointing. Don't overstrain your voice. The revelation in these two verses are many beds were mats, but the paralytic's friends may have carried him on the bed which he lay all the time yes. because of his issue and this man now he was stuck on this one bed and he was paralyzed in verse 3 it says one sick of the palsy in the Greek language that means paralyzed and the word paralyzed it means to dissolve it means it has dissolved it means the loss write this down it means the loss paralyzed. Paralyzed means the loss of power to move any part of the body. Paralyzed means the loss of power to move any part of the body. Come on, Bishop, teach. And the Holy Ghost revealed to me that this man's physical body, his physical body was paralyzed. Come on, Bishop, teach. His physical body was paralyzed. The Bible says there was one he lied sick of the palsy. This man's physical body was paralyzed, but he still got to Jesus. Come on. Come on, Bishop. I'm going to pause right now. Yeah, good, but... He was paralyzed, Mama. Mama, like this. He was paralyzed, Pastor Bobby, but he still got to Jesus. Come on, I'm messing with y'all. So I'm messing with the teaching of yes. The Holy Ghost revealed to me that this man may have been physically paralyzed. I'm going to teach today, y'all. Can I teach? Yes, Bishop. Yes, Bishop. This man had been physically paralyzed. And he lost. The first thing is he was physically paralyzed. The second thing, he lost the power to physically move any part of his body. That's right. But there's hope. And the hope is he could not move his physical body, but his faith was not paralyzed. Come on, Bishop. All right. Say it again, Bishop. His physical body was paralyzed. Yes, Lord. But his faith was not paralyzed. My God. Oh, if you could preach. Woo. And the Holy Ghost told me to tell you <laughs> that the Holy Ghost told me to tell on, you that many of you are going by what your life looks like now. Come on, Bishop. Help us, Bishop. And you have allowed your situation to paralyze your faith. <laughs> you felt that, didn't you? <laughs> you look at that. Look at past <laughs> You have allowed what it looks like in your life to paralyze your faith. Come on, Bishop. Help me, Bishop. Your faith has become paralyzed because of what you see you are going through. Many of you, your faith has lost the power to move all of the mountains in your life. My God. You have become a paralytic in your faith. Come on, Bishop. 
My God, ouch. The text. Pastor Bob and my daughter, what messed me up in this pericable text is not only did this paralyzed man have faith, but he was connected to people and had four friends who had crazy faith. Come on, Bishop. Not just faith, but abnormal faith. Faith out of the norm. Crazy faith. And the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that many of you need to choose your friends wisely. Amen. My God. The Bible says in the proverbial scriptures that we must choose our friends wisely. Everybody who say they are your friend aren't necessarily your friend. And this paralytic had friends who had crazy faith like he did. Amen. Because sometimes you can connect with people who don't believe like you. And they can become a major hindrance to you and your faith. Come on, Bishop. And many of you could have already been delivered. You should have been delivered last season. But because of your paralytic mentality, you got caught up with people who have paralytic faith, and now you are stuck. Come on, Bishop. But today, I come to pull you out of your paralytic mentality. Because notice now, paralyzed means not being able to use your physical body. Come on, Bishop. And whom Jesus sets free is free indeed. And I heard Bishop Morton say, certain people have careful faith. And then there is a people who have reckless faith. Come on, Bishop. Now watch this. Write this down. Take notes. Careful faith says, be careful now. Okay. Careful faith says, you're dreaming too big. That's what careful faith says. Careful faith says, well, start out. Start out on this low level and work your way up. That's careful faith. But the Holy Ghost revealed to me that too many believers have what you call paralytic faith. Same. This is what it means. Which means their faith is under attack because of the situation you are in. And your faith has lost the power to move you out of the pit-like situation you're in. And I come to preach to someone who has reckless faith. Meaning, meaning I am believing for the impossible. When a reckless driver is getting in an accident, and they realize the car is out of control. Mm -hmm. They take their hands off the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And they start calling on Jesus. On, and they cover their eyes. And they hope the car will land in safety. Amen. And that is how your faith has got to be. you got to allow your faith to, to ignore your present situation. you got to have that reckless faith that will cause you to ignore having no money. Because reckless faith says, I may have no money, but God is still Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Reckless faith says, I'm going to love your evil family member, your evil friend, your evil husband, your evil wife, your rebellious kids. And you got to know that things are about to shift in your life for the better. Come on, Bishop. I wish I could preach this, y'all. And this is how right, Bishop, you preach it. In verses 5 through 7, in verses 5 through 7, the Holy Ghost illuminated revelatory revelation to me. And this is what it was in verses 5 through 7 as you look at them. The reason why the scribes 
had a hard time with Jesus. And they accused Jesus of blasphemy because Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven. And God revealed to me they didn't recognize God in human flesh. Come on, Lord have mercy. Come on, Bishop. Lord have mercy. They did not recognize God in human flesh. Watch this. They knew from Old Testament that sins were to be atoned for by offerings in the temple. Come on, Bishop. Teach. And Judaism taught that only God could forgive sins. And so they didn't see Jesus. They didn't see Jesus as a priest. And no one had offered a sacrifice. Come on, Bishop. But what they failed to realize, Mama, is that Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus was God in flesh, saying, Son, thy sins be forgiven. Come on, Bishop. It was God saying, Your sins are forgiven. And so now, because now their hearts were corrupt, they kept God, they kept God in a box and didn't realize that Jesus, through his death and resurrection, would be the actual sacrifice and atone for our sins. Teach. They forgot in the Old Testament where it says he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, he, we are healed. This is Christ talking. This is Christ we are talking about. God, I can preach right now. I wish I could preach. God is about to bless you like you have never seen him before in your life. Don't wait until the battle is over. Shout now. Don't wait until the depression is gone. Shout now. Don't wait until the money comes. Shout now. Don't wait until your mama gets saved. Don't wait until your mama gets saved. Don't wait until your husband or your wife gets saved. Don't wait until you find your wife or find your husband. Shout now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, shout now. Shout until you get your breakthrough. Shout until you get healed. Shout until you get delivered. People are going to look at your life and say, we never saw it in this fashion. God is about to you are a water walker. You don't have a bold mentality. God created you to walk on water. God, I feel a preacher. This is your time. This is your season to be blessed. Is there anybody in here? Why he stopped to deal with this man? Uh -huh. 
The Holy Ghost revealed this to me. Write this down. Number one. By them having reckless faith. This is what reckless faith to do. The reckless faith, it calls them to climb the staircase and rip the roof off. That's what reckless faith did. I'm not gonna kill, I'm not gonna talk anymore until y'all hear this. Number one, by them having reckless faith, reckless faith, not careful faith. Come on, Bishop. It calls them to climb the staircase and rip the roof off. And these four people and paralytic had reckless faith. And it was dangerous climbing the roof. It was dangerous climbing the roof. But they had reckless faith. <laughs> and so now, Mama, the Holy Ghost revealed to me that this paralytic man went out of the way and tore the roof off because this paralytic man had a revelation mm -hmm. that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Y'all didn't catch that. I think I'm I think I'm speaking Chinese. I don't I y'all y'all don't want to, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm preaching a foreign language. So let me speak in English so you can understand the proclivity and the expertise in this pericable scriptural text. All right. Come on, Bishop. The reason why this paralytic man went out of his way to tear the roof off was because he had a revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. Yes. So you got to be seasoned in case this revelation in this, in this verse like that. Because right. I just dropped a bomb. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Because I feel like I'm speaking Spanish. Right. Come on, Bishop. Uh, I want to speak English right. so you can understand it. Because many people came to Jesus for healing. But not all of them had a revelation of who he was. But this paralytic man had a revelation that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. So in turn, he went out of his way to get to the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Because all the people thought there was a crowd of people crowding the house, listening to him, listening to him preach. But they was listening to him, Pastor Bobby. But at the same time, didn't have a revelation Amen. of who he was. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Bishop. Because now, because of that, they went out of the norm to get to Jesus. They went out of the norm. Reckless faith. They went out of the norm to get to Jesus. And when are you as the people of God are going to go out of the norm to get to Jesus? Come on, Bishop. Help me, Bishop. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you, when you really know who Jesus is, you will tear the roof off yes, right. to get to him. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> when you really know who Jesus is, you won't worry how you're going to make it. I'm going to say that again. You can bring the kids back in here now. Okay. Come on, guys. When you really know who Jesus is, when you really know who Jesus is,
when you really know who Jesus is through the power of God. Yes. Hold on one second, son. I'm waiting for Pastor to come back in. When you really know who Jesus is, Y'all don't know the power I feel of it right now. When you really know who Jesus is, y'all, I'm telling y'all. It is. When you really know who Jesus is. Jesus. When you really know him. I'm trying to help y'all. Because I believe the word. I know what the word say. When you really know who Jesus is. Well, somebody going to figure out today that I really thought I knew him. Just because you got a title don't mean you really know him. That's right, that's right. When you really, Pastor Bobby feeling this, when you really know who Jesus is, you won't worry how you're going to make it. My God. <laughs> Come on, Bishop. This whole thing better be full in the end. Because y'all faith needs to be. Y'all need some uh, some some faith. Us. Hold on one second, son. Oh, yes, Lord. When you really know who Jesus is, I'm telling you. Jesus. That's right, son. When you really know him, you won't worry how you're gonna make it from day to day. I'm exposing y'all today. When you really know who Jesus is, you won't worry about how you're going to pay your bills. When you really know who Jesus is, you won't worry about how you're going to make it from day to day. You just won't. It is impossible. Not only that, but the Holy Ghost revealed to me that the reason why Jesus says your sins are forgiven because not only did the paralytic realize Jesus was the Messiah but Jesus also was absolutely was absolutely sure that this paralytic man knew he was the Messiah that's good Bishop, that's good oh, have mercy, you gotta be seasoned to get, to get this revelation of this word say that right mama that's right so the paralytic man knew that Jesus was the Messiah without the paralytic man telling Jesus that. That's right. He deserved it. But Jesus discerned, thank you, in his spirit that this paralytic man knew who he was and that he was the Messiah. Amen. Come on, that's good, Bishop. So we just so because Jesus knew this paralytic man knew who he was right. and that he was the Messiah he stopped preaching and put his eyes on him right. y'all catch that next year y'all get there one day I caught it I caught it I'm enjoying this what the Holy Ghost what the Holy Ghost revealed to me is that Jesus had watch this I'm closing now I want y'all to kiss this revelation because this next thing is going to blow your mind what the Holy Ghost revealed to me. What the Holy Ghost revealed to me what the Holy Ghost revealed to me is that Jesus had what you call the Messianic secret. Hey, hey. Go he. Go he. I don't have I'm the only theologian in here. I realize that. <laughs> teach us, Bishop. Teach us. But that's okay. God, he had to give it to you. He did. Uh -huh. What the Holy Ghost revealed to me is that Jesus had what you called the Messianic secret. Amen. Meaning, write this down. Meaning 
when Jesus was in ministry, he purposed in his mind to keep it a secret of him being the Messiah. Amen. 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 Almighty, Lord have mercy. Lord, I wish I had some scholars in here. Jesus conceals Jesus on purpose. He hides his messianic identity. Amen. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. And the question theologically is why? Mm -hmm. Catch this. Take notes. If Jesus would have revealed himself as the Messiah and reveal the secret too soon, That's right. then it could have actually hindered his earthly ministry right. and messed up the destiny of him going to the cross Amen. at the appropriate time. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Oh God. Look at your name and say, Jesus' mission 
Jesus' mission, ministry, and assignment was completely different from any political views about Messiah's coming at this time. Teach, Bishop. So the Holy Ghost revealed to me that Jesus revealing himself as the Messiah was not time yet because, watch this, it was, it was inadequate at the time because Jesus had to wait until the appointed time to define it to the Jews, to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders, and to the people. It was wrong if Jesus would reveal himself as Messiah prematurely until Jesus could define himself as Messiah by the character of his mission, assignment, and ministry. So the question comes, theologically, when could it be revealed that he was the Messiah? When? When could it be revealed that he was the Messiah? I'm going to prove it in Scripture. I'm going to argue my point in Scripture. The Holy Ghost revealed to me that, watch this, it could only be revealed that Jesus is the Messiah after his death and after his resurrection. Amen. My God. What do you mean, Bishop? After Jesus emptied himself through death on the cross, the resurrection told it all. The resurrection told the story. When I put on my robe and tell the story, that I made it over. Yes, sir. Yes. God, I feel a breach. Yes, Watch this. His resurrection showed that he is the Messiah. His resurrection showed he is the Christ. Do y'all got it now? Mm -hmm. His resurrection showed he is the bread of heaven. His resurrection showed he is the resurrection. <laughs> and God told me to tell you that people won't be able to see who you are. People won't be able to see who you are until you die to yourself. That's right. That's right. People won't be able to see who you are until you die to yourself. When you give up yourself and completely surrender to God, that's when God will reveal to people who you are. Because once you die to your flesh, until flesh, no, it is then when God will resurrect you. See, the resurrection proved to everybody that Jesus is the Messiah. And do I have anybody in here that know that Jesus is the Son of God? Do I have anybody in here that knows that Jesus is the Messiah? Do I have anybody in here that know that Jesus pulled you out of the rut of sin? Do I have anybody in here that know that the blood of Jesus is making ways out of no ways? I, I feel it now. Do I have anybody in here that know that God is protecting you? God is covering you. Put those hands together for Jesus and give God a praise. Joshua chapter 1. 
verse 6 he says he tells Joshua be strong and of good courage for unto this people thou shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them Verse 7 says, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So I'm going to tell you how to be blessed. If you obey, my son, if you obey the word of God, Don, if you obey the word of God and do everything that the word of God says, the Bible says that you will be prosperous and successful. If you do what the Word of God says and resist temptation, because don't you know that God wants to get you to a place to where you will ignore temptation? See, the problem with a lot of us, a lot of y'all, when temptation comes, instead of you ignoring it, you fall right into it. But God wants to get you to a place where you can look at temptation and go, ha, 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 laugh at temptation, laugh at temptation, that, ha, 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 devil, you got me with that last season, this is a new season, this is a new day, really, that's all you got, God wants to get you to a place, I, I, God, I wish I could preach, God, but my voice won't let me, God wants to get you to a place, to where you will ignore temptation. If you do what the word of God says. I'm trying to tell y'all how to get blessed. If you do what the word of God says. You will be prosperous and successful. That's what the word say. Put those hands together for Jesus and give God a praise. The altar is open. The altar is open. Jesus had a messianic secret. When God revealed that to me, boy, man, I about jumped through my roof. I said, I've never in my life heard this text taught the way I taught it today. Revealed, Mama, that he was a Messiah too soon. Uh -huh. It would have ruined his ministry. That's right. And it would have been a major hindrance. Right. Because check this. God is so strategic. God in heaven already chose the day, the time, the place where everything was going to happen. Where Jesus would be crucified. Jesus chose the second, the minute, right. the day, the hour, the month, the year. He had everything orchestrated. So Jesus had to keep it a secret. But when he was resurrected, it told it all, Mama. It told it all. And God told me to tell you all that God is with you. And he's going to show your haters, your critics, that the Lord is with you. He 
here I am. Lord, send me. Here I am. Lord, send me. Christ. Yes. 